just doing a little video for my peeps on the Serato forum uh, just to take you through how I use Lima with Serato and mix emergency stuff and to so just to give you an idea of why I think Lima is the one instead of Touch OSC. Um, the winning part for me on Lima is definitely the fact that not only have you got different pages that you can have and you can name those pages so like up here and up here and up here I've got Ableton, Mix Emergency, Serato, DJ, my latest template has got Scratch Live as well and you can actually name those so you can see what they are, Touch OSC you've only just got like three grey strips that's all you can do um, so that opens up straight away you know exactly what you're looking at and then within that you can have different pages or different you can have a container with different tabs in it so for example on my Serato DJ one which I'm using with the DJ DDJ SX I've got um, different pages for each deck so like when I've got deck 3 and deck 4 the two that you don't normally have access to unless you switch over I can just do a sync and play if I've got an acapella on there I can hit the hit the cues I can do individual beat loops for each deck as well which you can't do on the SX you have to like select a beat length whereas on this now I can just say right I want a 4 beat loop off it goes so that makes a big difference obviously with the auto gain I can preset the gain on each track as well, which makes a big difference in terms you know, when it gets the auto gain wrong, and I don't have to muck about with going and touching that on screen. So I like that a lot. Um, so therefore, I've got a page as well for auto loops right across. I can halve and double them as well, and loop out as well. Uh, unfortunately, the, the mapping in Serato DJ is a little bit limited. Not everything's there, like loop rolls. I'd like to have on there, but they're not on there. But you know, that, I'm sure that'll come in time. Got my SP6, so I've got all my different samples, can hit those and gain controls for those and switch banks as well. And the FX, which is my favourite page, um, so I can select, I basically have an echo on the left hand effect unit and I have a filter on the right, a high pass, low pass combo filter. And so I can select which deck that goes to. That's reflected on the screen, on the um, on the controller itself, that lights up. So I can see that, you know, we don't have MIDI out, but sometimes some things do reflect on the controller. Um, the on-off, I can switch each effect on and off. I've got two buttons there. Um, and I've got then some also, I've got my SP6 samples in there as well, because I can hit samples from the same pages I'm doing effects. So I can do a big build-up with a filter, a bit of white noise on the filter, and then I can echo, and I can do a horn as well. Um, so the idea of that, this sort of page is I can actually pick it up and hold it. Um, this filter is a height, it's a bipolar fader, so it will go up and down. And when I let it go, it returns back to zero, which is quite a neat little effect. Um, also, I've got that mapped on the gyroscope on the iPad. So when I hold it, if I tilt that way, if I tilt left, the filter goes up. If I tilt uh, right, the filter goes down, so I can come like be all like James Abila and uh, wave my iPad around, and it actually does stuff, which is pretty cool. Um, this is one of the mapping tricks that I learned, which um, I think it was Ben Jamin from the Video Geeks uh, posted on the the Inkland forum. Basically, obviously the beats control on the SX, you have to it's a rotary, and you can select. There's like 30 different options so you've got 16th um, 16th T triplet you know you delay them all so what I've done is basically I've broken down that 128 steps and I've divided that by 30 I'll get my bit of paper right here. So you have to do a bit of sums. So you work out how many options there are on the rotary, and then you do your sum. So basically you break it down, each one, divide it up. So you've got 130 steps, no, 30 steps. Divide 128, which is 128 MIDI points on the MIDI. Uh, divide that by 30, and then you can do each whole number. So then you select, so I've got quarter beat, half beat. And you can do that with mixed emergency stuff as well. So if you wanted to scroll through your list of effects, um, you can then divide, you say how many effects have I got in the list, divide the 128 steps of your MIDI control by that number, and then each whole number that comes along, you just put that in 
into Lima. I, you know, there's tutorials on that. I'll, I'll point you to the link on the England forum. That's pretty cool. Um, and then, yeah, each, obviously each of those tabs is named. I can see exactly what I'm looking at. Deck three, deck one, two, three, four. You know, so that's great. Mix emergency. I've got the mixer. That's obviously with the MIDI out on the Inkland Mix Emergency Program. So all of that lights up, gets sent back according to the state that it's on. So I move the crossfader on the mixer uh, or on Mix Emergency on screen, and that will move that fader as well, left and right. Um, auto fade and so on is up there. Then obviously you don't need to muck about too much with Mix Emergency because it's got the presets. So I've got all of my different favorite transitions that I have, they're all just sets, presets in Mix Emergency's preset window and I've mapped to those. Dead straightforward and it means, whereas previously I was using like, something like the MIDI fighter and I could have all my different effects mapped to that, great, but I can't see which ones they are, um, whereas now I've got the text on there, I can see exactly what they are. Same thing with the media bank, I've got all the media bank can load those, they're named, I can see what they are. I would like, hopefully, one day Lima will have images on there as well, because that would be awesome just to have the image of those. Uh, be able to put an image on each button would be immense. And then I've got my, obviously, quartz overlays as well, and effects. Um, also then I've got my Ableton page, so I can control number of clips on Ableton. I've just started building the Ableton one recently. I was using a program called Grid, but that seems to have some conflicts um, with the Serato stuff, so I'm not, I've am not. i gone away from that. Um, so I've got the Tractors 12 on guitar rig, I can do the Gator, and when I'm using Serato DJ I don't have the bridge, so I have this module which someone's made and posted onto the, um, the line forum. Um, or the line page where they everyone posts their presets and stuff that they've made. You've got a fine adjust and BPM adjust. That's totally reflected in Ableton, and then I can bend it to match it. So I can actually beat match my Ableton set with my Serato DJ or Scratch Live, whatever I'm using at the tour, even itch, you know, if I'm using that. Um, so that all works together. Uh, I think the line forum seems to be a little better. Um, looked after, there seems to be a bit more action on there, the Touch OSC forum seems to be just full of spam and nothing else at the moment, they haven't updated for a long time whereas Lima just updated about a month ago um, and also I, the way I see it, I think, I don't really understand about OSC, like I just do MIDI, that's all I know um, but I know if you want to do OSC with the Touch OSC you have to buy the Osculator program which costs about the same all told as it does to get Lima on its own and Lima does OSC with its own daemon thing that's on your computer just does it anyway so it kind of works out about the same price so ultimately yeah I think Lima is, is the way to go the other thing is each of these sort of containers or any object that you make I don't know if this is true of OSC but certainly so I've got say my my media bank section that I've got in this little box what I can do is export that and have that as like a module so if I do another mapping in the future I can just export that and then import that into the new module I've managed I've actually been moving these pages around quite a lot trying to work out what's the best layout for me and in doing so I can just literally export and import those modules in and out with their MIDI settings still attached everything stays the same um, so if I wanted to when I do my scratch live one I could actually have say half a page of scratch live effects um, and I have that as a module and then I could import my uh, say my mix emergency transitions or effects and have that on the other side without any mucking around um, so it really does work out quite nicely I think from that point of view so yeah so that's it that's why I like Lima um, it's the bomb